everybody. Um, I'm going to come back to the topic of gay marriage one last time, just because my last video, it was my first video, and I feel like I've missed a few key points. Holy shit, too rocker for you. You are just too cute for me. I want to take you out on the goddamn Sarah Han 06 Fago and Pizza date. You ain't never been on that date. You want to know what that date is? Basically, I buy your ass a bottle of rock and rye and a big ass slice of cheese pizza. Then we go back to my place and we twist up a. Due to the graphic nature of this commentary and the fact that most people are hypersensitive douchebags, this commentary has been censored where applicable. And of course, after that, those towels are going to be useless. After we get them up off of the carpet and everything, we're going to have to do a shitload of laundry. So then, you know, we have to. You know, dip it all in a bucket of ice cubes, because that's really just the best way to. But you, you're not quite tall enough to ride that motherfucking roller coaster, are you, two rockers? So instead of focusing on how attractive you are physically, let's um, talk about how attractive you are mentally, which is quite another motherfucking story. I am again going to begin by stating that if you are a Christian, that probably means that you agree with what the Bible has to say. Well, that's really a matter of um, interpreting scripture really because I know a lot of Christians really can't agree on the proper interpretation of their scripture. Not to mention the fact that the majority of people disagreeing with you on this issue are not Christians. I'm not sure if you didn't notice this or not, but they're, they're not Christians to Rocker, um, probably because they find Christianity to be morally fucking repugnant. You do not want to accept the lifestyle by granting the marriage. You do not want to accept the lifestyle by granting the marriage. I want you to remember that you said that. Back when there were two cities named Sodom and Gomorrah, men started lusting after other men, among many other sins which were completely disgusting, and God wiped those cities from the earth. He removed those cities. So I'm assuming that God finds homosexuality to be a sin. Well, I have to assume that this God you're referring to is an incompetent subpar creator. I mean, come on, it's like someone that invents something, uh, a machine. This machine was designed to serve a very specific function. Um, and the inventor of this machine, the person who designed it, when the machine serves its function flawlessly, the designer becomes angry and scraps the entire fucking project right there on the spot. Now, how does that make any sense? I am perfect and you go on in your video to say that your God is perfect. If this designer is perfect, then his design will also be perfect. I mean, it only makes sense, doesn't it? How can a perfect designer design something that's imperfect? Explain that shit to me. It was not part of the original plan. God did not make Adam and Steve. You know, he made Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> you really said that, didn't you? Um, actually, according to your theory, God created, God created Adam, Eve, and then at some point he created Steve. And Adam just thought Steve was a little bit more appealing than Eve. Um, now, how can we blame Adam for that? After all, your God is a perfect creator, right? <laughs> um, I am against any type of intimacy before marriage between any genders of people, regardless of their gender. I have to go on record as saying I wholeheartedly disagree with you. The more fucking people are doing, the happier they are. I think we should all be fucking each other as much as possible. God did say, be fruitful and multiply, but if you go around giving your love to just anyone, you're bonding with many different people, and you always come at her in the end. You're really one of these people that were raised to believe that love and sex are the same thing, and I don't know about you, but I've, uh, I've had some sex that had absolutely nothing to do with love. Um, it feels good. It's a lot of fun, and like I said before, a lot of people should be doing it. Um, you come out hurt in the end if you make that connection, if you make um, sexual contact about love. 
then yeah, you run the risk of getting hurt. But that's what you've made sex out to be. You've made sex uh, all about love when in and of itself it has nothing to do with that emotion. Um, so yeah, if you make it about love, then you run the risk of getting hurt. Big fucking deal. A lot of people don't see it that way. If you have sex before marriage, you're sinning, and God will punish you if you sin. No one sins and gets away with it. You might for a while, but it'll always come back to you. And you're not trying to, like, say, ooh, threaten you. Yes, you are. If you don't repent of your sexual behavior, you will... You'll get in trouble. See what I mean? Many claim that there is a gay gene which causes people to automatically be homosexual. Uh, that... Okay. So, God is perfect. God knows everything. He created everything. He is perfect. And since God finds homosexuality to be a sin, God wouldn't create someone who is born gay because that would be saying that he's being hypocritical, which would be imperfect, and God is perfect. Basically, the argument that you're making is that homosexuality is a choice, not something that God created. But we're not only talking about homosexuality, are we? Nope. To validate your argument, you're going to have to convince me that my heterosexuality is a choice that I made. I made some sort of unconscious choice to be attracted to women. Sorry, that shit don't fly, and like I said before, you're just a little bit too short to ride the roller coaster. Try again next year. Peace. God will punish you if you sin. No one sins and gets away with it. I'm not trying to, like, say, ooh, threaten you.